Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the holidays. We have officially crossed over Halloween. We have Thanksgiving in sight and Christmas. And we all know the real meaning behind Christmas. Awkward family conversations. Who's going to ruin whose holidays? This holiday season. So gather around, children, and let's enjoy the fucking holidays together. There wasn't really much to that song. Was it a song? I don't know. It kind of felt like an intro to a song. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome. If you haven't been here before, stick around. Maybe this will get entertaining after a while. Or maybe not. Maybe it's a waste of your time. But anyway, that's between you and baby Jesus. All right? The reason for the season. The holiday season. No one really knows anymore. No one really knows what anybody is doing or why anybody is doing. It's all about with Grandmaster Fauci. Grand Lord. I don't even know. What is a Grandmaster? Whatever. Leader who decides the fates of Christmas. The holidays. I don't even know what kind of accent we're doing. We should probably just abandon this bit. But now we go further. Farther than ever before. I love me some holidays. I'll be honest with you. I bitch and I moan. I complain. What are, what are we doing around here? It's all commercialized. But I fuck around with Thanksgiving. I make fun of turkey quite a bit in my life. Any chance I get, I'm taking shots at that turkey. That dry ass bird. The driest bird in the animal kingdom. Just dry chicken. That's all it is. Okay? But I love it. There's something about it. And you know what? This year... I plan on doing things a little different. I'm going to have for the first time in my life a Texas turkey. And I just feel like that turkey is going to taste like liberty. Okay? It's just going to be, I feel like there'll be an American flag etched into the side of it. You know? The national anthem will just play as I take my first bite of that turkey leg. Just off in the distance, you'll hear a bald eagle crow. Does it sound kind of like a Pokemon? Yeah. Okay. How many bald eagles do you think I've seen in my life? Three? My entire life? I don't know what the fuck they sound like. I don't think I've ever heard a bald eagle in person make a noise. Okay? So don't blame me for how it sounds. Um, but I've had some dry bird in my day. We just had a Halloween yesterday. Real exciting. Your boy had actual candy. My girl got a huge bag of Starburst. We got zero trick-or-treaters. Listen, right now we're in an apartment. You don't know what you're going to expect. It's a gated apartment. You don't know. You get a bag of candy because you don't know what you want to be. You, don't, you know what you don't want to be? The people who don't have candy when little kids come in for candy. Okay? You don't, you don't want to be that house or apartment, condo trailer, tent, whatever you're living in. You got to have candy for the kids in Halloween. Don't be that person who passes out celery. Okay. I'm surprised there's got to be, I always, this is one of my favorite things to do is to think that the wildest shit you can imagine has had to have happened somewhere once. Okay. So there's got to be some neighborhood where instead of passing out cam candy, they passed out weird political agenda pamphlets. Or they made some bullshit candy and then wrapped it with like a little Democrat or Republican or some off-brand group logo on it. Be like, here, don't forget to vote for fucking John Worcester sauce. You know? Had to happen. And then some people come back later when they find it and their kids are like, hey, I don't appreciate you making Halloween political. And then they're just like, get the fuck off my lawn. And then they put a flaming T in their lawn because they're like, it's time to talk about it. It's time to go. Okay? That's what those crosses stand for. You should check out that South Park episode. Phenomenal. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Long-winded, 
long-winded intro. I remember one time on Halloween, my brother and I, we went trick-or-treating to this house. It was just us. Sometimes, listen, Halloween sometimes was overshadowed. And we went trick-or-treating. I think we decided last minute, we didn't have costumes. We decided we're going to dress up like bums or something. And because we just, I think we put on the costume for them the year before. Maybe we traded, but we were like, fuck it. Let's go get some candy, homie. And we're walking, we're going up the street. And I remember we went to this house. Lights not really on, but there was like one light. So we're like, yeah, we'll give it a shot. So we go up to the house and ding dong. And this little old lady answers the door and she goes, uh, yes. And then I go, trick or treat. And my brother's like, trick or treat. And then she's just looking at us in shock. And she's like, wait, ha Halloween is today? And we both were just like broken hearted. And we we're like, yeah, yeah, that's that's today. And then she was like, oh, I'm oh, oh. And we we're like, it's our, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Then I met my brother, rest his soul, so sweet. She walks away, disappears into a home, just left the door open, real trusting. We're a couple half Puerto Ricans. We could have robbed her blind. And he goes, I think we should give her all our candy. And I go, bro, relax. Let's not take it that far. That's a little extreme. I was like, if we're going to, maybe we give her a handful of candy, which I don't know why, you know, but he, listen, man was full of spirit. He had the heavenly father in him, okay? A pure soul. The lady comes back, doesn't even have candy. She gave us open mints. And you know what? I took them. I said, hey, I appreciate that. And we walked off. She didn't want any of our candy. My brother did offer. Um, but I remember that being heartbreaking. And that made me, ever since that day, never go up to a house that wasn't completely lit. Because I'm like, you'd think some people just don't want trick-or-treaters, but some people just don't know what the fuck is going on, you know? So sad. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I hope y'all been living good. Y'all been living sexy. Getting real sexy with it. Yeah. Except for Will Smith and Jada. Jada keeps throwing him under the bus For us, our entertainment, a must We'll get your house in order Where the fuck your nuts? Ooh. What is going on with the children? It's a vibe I'm sorry Willow, I can't fuck with that shit I just don't believe it with your pants with the holes in them it's a vibe oh i am just an icon living now you're the son of an icon who you kidding in no way shape or form did that song even supposed to start out as a diss song against the smith household listen Will Smith, one of my favorites of all time. I got to come clean. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air might as well be my babysitter growing up. I used to call my buddy. We loved the show so much. We had landlines. We would just sit on the phone, not even really talking, and just watching Will Smith together. Having a gay old time. Just a couple dudes, you know, like 11 years old, watching fucking Fresh Prince of Bel-Air like we're in the notebook or something. Just listening to each other's chuckles and breaths over the phone and every now and then goes, hey, he's still there? Yeah, cool. Watching Fresh Prince. Now this is the story all about how Jada fucked my world upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, but she won't just stop telling you how. There's something wrong with my... I'm not gonna disrespect the man like that. Okay, listen. If you don't know, if you've been living under a rock, I don't know if we talked about this. This whole Will Smith and Jada saga. Jada just can't stop talking about Will Smith. And she's just publicly flexing on him constantly. First, it was with that entanglement. She was getting in. Entanglement is the funniest way to say, I'll be fucks other people. It is. That's hilarious. 
That's the equivalent of the Eminem Dre song, Guilty Conscience. What? Slip? Landed on his dick? An entanglement. An entanglement. An entanglement is what happens when your sunglasses get caught in your hair. Okay? Or what happens to your, your iPhone headphones in your pocket. Okay? That's why AirPods were invented. To avoid this kind of thing. All right? That's an entanglement. Entanglement is the funniest word to choose ever. We got entangled. No, wait, hold on. Can you imagine that conversation of someone using that as their definition for cheating? Hey, listen. There's going to be some things coming out. Someone has some evidence. Yeah, of what? You're not going to like this. Sit down. Okay, you're kind of scaring me. Like, did you cheat? <laughs> like, I just need to know right now. No, I didn't cheat. I got entangled. What? Well, what does entangled mean? Were you wrestling? No, no, kind of. But no, like, it, I got involved in an entanglement. Okay, uh, what is that? What was entangled? <sighs> I mean, my dick might have entangled. Whoa, 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 what? What? I didn't cheat, though. It was an entanglement. Just a, a brief entanglement. And it got worked out after about 37 minutes. Can you imagine that? That's the weir weirdest way to say that. But she did it, and she embarrassed Will Smith like that on national television. And then she went back with Gwyneth Paltrow and basically was like, listen... I have the equivalent of not being able to get it up for Will. It is what it is, you know? And she, listen, listen, listen. Who does that? Who thinks that's cool? This is the woman that Tupac was into. What happened? This is what Hollywood does. They just fuck people's brains up. It's a weird world, okay? It really does show you, like, if you think back, like, how long humans have been on the planet, how weird the idea of celebrity and unlimited resources are. Because this is something that I, I try, I struggle with it, but I try to be as disciplined as possible. But, like, we have so much dopamine and superficial reward systems at our fingertips all the time with cell phones you know how crazy it is that young men and young women they don't have to do anything to achieve like seeing so many naked people on the internet like all the stuff like this none of this technology and stuff was available that long ago like one person ago they didn't even have that and now it's just at the disposal of kids where they can just see whatever they want, get stimulated in any way possible without any work or labor to achieve it. And I just mean in the sense of like, you used to have to go on dates, you used to have to do this, you know, TV programs used to come on at a certain time, your show, you would have to wait a week. Everything's like instant. And it's so, like, I don't think we've caught up to, we don't have a governor, you know, we nothing's regulating us. Regulators. Sorry, that's my ADHD. Mount up keep up okay listen how crazy is it we have all of this stuff just at our fingertips and no one is regulating it at all no one is being like okay well you need to make sure this limit we try to impose it i try to impose it on myself where i'll put like a 15 minute timer or whatever on uh facebook instagram i don't even have twitter anymore my twitter account got hacked and i just went nah you could have it i just never went through the process of getting it back good luck you know Good luck. If you see some weird shit on Twitter from me, just keep it moving, pimping. But the point I'm making, this whole Will and Jada thing, because I've heard weird stuff, and this is why it's weird to, to raise your kids. And honestly, you turn your kids into celebrities, and it's like this whole thing. So I feel comfortable talking about it from a sense of 
It's part of our zeitgeist of just the whole social experience. But raising kids in that environment, you're giving them not only is everything accessible to people online and we don't have a governor of that, all the stuff at your fingertips, being raised in that ecosystem of Hollywood, you have everything else at your fingertips. You have booty calls, you have food, you have celebrity access, you have the coolest clubs, the best food, all this stuff. And there's no need uh, for achieving it. There's no requirement. And because of that, there's no reward system, a healthy reward system. And I think that's what happens with like, uh, when Jada starts talking about shit like this, I obviously, I don't know what it's like to be with someone for whatever many years they've been together, but I do know they've had a weird shit in the past where they talk about their open relationship and things like that. But I feel like when you just get inducted into that world of everything's at your fingertips, the world is your oyster. You are gonna get tired of oysters. You're going to keep having to raise the ante up. You know, listen, I love chicken wings. Love them. If you don't, if you don't know me by now, then you will never know me. But I love chicken wings. I, I, I eat them all the time. Right now, it's Monday. I'm already thinking about Saturday because I already told myself I was getting chicken wings. But here's how I don't ruin it. I don't eat chicken wings for every meal. I don't eat them every day. Hell, I'll take two weeks off from eating chicken wings because I got to reset my system, okay? I start having chicken wings too many times. I start fucking around and wanting something more than chicken wings. Maybe I get too strung out on chicken wings. I might fuck around and try to get a boneless wing just to experiment a bit, you know? And that's when you know I'm fucked up. When you, when you see me starting to be like, hey, I wonder if the boneless ones do taste a little different, you know? Just know I'm out there on the edge. I'm on the fringe. I'm lost in the fray, baby. Okay? Reel me back in. I need you to tie me down like a werewolf during the moonshine. Okay? And don't let me go out. Because you need to bleed the chicken wings from my system if I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking about trying some fucking boneless wings. F here. Okay? Sorry. But that's what I think all this stuff is is it's weird overstimulation of everything. I always love the celebrities and I'm like, I don't want to annoy people by talking about Dave Chappelle so much, but I always thought it was dope that he moved away, that he realized what was happening, how weird celebrity and fame is. And he moved out. I think he lives in Ohio on a farm and he's just like, I can't be in this world. It seems like such a weird manufactured fake thing that it's like you have to get away from that. You have to know. It's like fucking Gandalf in the ring. Remember how Gandalf didn't want the ring? He would try to use it for good, but he knows the power was too much. That's how you got to be. Because if you're not, you're going to turn into Smeagol. You know, you're just going to be there with every whim of your pleasure center and be like, yes, my process. Ooh. I had to serve that, you know, shit's wild, shit's wild. Um, wow, we are already almost at 20 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. I apologize. We have some questions backed up from uh, a couple episodes ago that I never got to. And I was like, let me throw these in there, switch it up a little bit. Um, so we're going to end this episode with a few questions. I don't know which one I'm, I'm just going to look at them and decide which ones I want to read. And that's where we're going to go. First question, what did you learn from COVID? I feel like we talked about this a little bit, but since it's a question, I'll answer. Okay. What did I learn from COVID? Um, the chills and the sweats were enjoyable. Overall, I think it's a cold flu for me. Okay. For my immune system, I know... The risk versus reward. Never, ever, ever got to a point of feeling like I needed to go to the hospital. No antibiotics. Recovered. Felt good. Okay. Uh, what did I learn from it? It just, you know what? There's one thing that I've really learned. And 
this is something that I, it's a deeper thing. And that's what I'm realizing. Your boy has to do mushrooms or something. Okay. Cause I got to get my fucking chakra all aligned because I'm off balanced. And the reason why I know that this is me being very vulnerable with the listeners. Okay. I'm giving you that good, good, that gushy stuff in me is that part of my workaholicism. And trust me, that's what it is. I know I have an addiction to working. Um, it is a problem. And that's what I've realized with COVID is because I do get sick from time to time, even though I take so many, you know, vitamins and do all this stuff. And it's because I'm constantly in a state of fatigue. Um, and it's because I don't allow myself to rest properly. I don't, I don't ever, I don't do it in a healthy way. And I know it's some underlying thing of my value system being fucked up with myself. And I have confidence. I have all, you know, I, I feel good. I am objective with my work. But there's like a level of where I don't think I deserve rest. And I also feel like I have to always be working. I have to be doing this. I have to be pushing this. And if I don't, it's tied to guilt and shame. And I feel that shame sometimes where if I take a night off from doing stand up, if I, you know, give in to like, oh, I'm just going to like watch something and relax. I have this weird guilt and shame attached to it. If I, you know, and it's something that I govern. Uh, I've used that word way too much in this episode. Um, I'm always feeling like I need to be doing something. And I, I think that that's just, you know, a check engine light of being like, why am I not okay? Just chilling, just being as is. Why is this not good enough for me? Why do I always feel like I got to be reaching? And I'm all for hard work and trying to be exceptional. And as the great David Goggins says, being uncommon amongst uncommon men and women and whatever else. Uh, but it's something that I struggle with. And that COVID was a big wake up thing because even uh, while I had COVID, there was times I was still trying to work. I was still trying to, you know, I'd wake up and I'd start having meetings and Zoom meetings and doing all this stuff and trying to figure out ways to work. My fiance would be like, you fucking idiot. She wouldn't talk like that. But she would be like, you need to go rest. Get in bed and rest. And I would just be like, I would, I would realize I knew she was right. And I would just realize, be like, why the fuck am I doing this? Why do I always feel like I have to work so much? Um, and that's something I did learn from COVID. And I bet that's probably not the answer that you were expecting. Um, but I think that's also just part of growing and, uh, understanding, like we all have shit, you know, from our past and weird things that happened to us that we, we all got our own, our own, uh, our own adventure that we're on and reasons why we all do our own thing. And that's, what's, what's dope and sad at the same time is that it's all stuff that we can relate to each other on of things that we go through in hard times. But the good part is, um, I guess I don't know what the bad part was, but the bad part is, is that you're, you're alone on that journey. But the great part is, is that you're the only one that can fix it. You have all the tools on your own to be able to fix it. And that's what I, I love is that, you know, everybody has their superpowers, their skill sets, their strengths and their weaknesses. So everybody's dragon, their journey that they're on, that they got to slay, you know, this dragon, it's going to be different and it's not going to be easier for anyone. You know, it's like, I have a certain skill set. I can talk to people, you know, I'm at times outgoing and like, I have not things that I'm like, you know, people will be like, oh, well, it's easy for you. You have this and blah, blah, blah. But like my dragons are like different where it's like there's things that I feel the way some people feel about public speaking and being outgoing and talking and all this stuff. There's things that are my equivalent of that for them, you know, um, and there's like things that I wish when I hear about people just chilling and that they can just watch, you know, TV or they can take a nap. Dude, I can't nap during the day. Because for some reason, my brain won't shut off. And it'll be like, dude, you don't fucking nap, okay? You have to go do shit. You fucking loser, you know? And 
that's uh, something that I'm trying to work on. And I think we were talking about that on the podcast before all of COVID about how I need to fix my schedule and I need to stop overworking, you know? So I'm just going to quit everything and just uh, move to fucking Puerto Rico. Just live on the beach. All right. I'm fucking ready for it. I'm here for it. I'm getting out the rat race. All right. Um, how much time we got? Should we answer another one? Uh, if you could eat only one food, what would it be? Easy. Chicken wings. Chicken wings. I'm pretty sure it would be chicken wings. If it wasn't chicken wings, if we're being a, real, a realistic answer, it might be eggs. That's like a well-rounded thing. Has a lot of protein. Uh, it's got some fat. Has your aminos. I'd probably go with eggs. Easily digestible, you know. Uh, chicken wings might get a little weird. I feel like you might get some digestion ish issues after a while, especially if you're just eating chicken wings. Maybe avocado. I don't know. Avocado is going to make your... Number two is real weird after a while if you're only having avocado. That's a mean question. What would you eat? I guess you could fuck up for a fuck around and just uh, pick something that's a full spectrum thing within it. Like you get a sandwich. Is that allowed? A nice sandwich? Covers all your bases. Kind of like cheating though. Do you think anybody's ever been tortured where all they were allowed to eat was cheese like a captor? had them in their basement and they were like, yes, keep eating cheddar. And they just only fed them cheese. I mean, there's probably some people who do that themselves. Like they're like, I only like cheese. That's a weird lifestyle. Anyway, uh, what are some key differences between Californians and Texans? Uh, this is a good question. Um, I honestly, I joke around so much about don't Texas my California. Don't California my Texas. All this shit. I don't see much different. Like, that's the thing is once you break through the superficial layer of people, everybody's the same for the most part. You got to be pretty radical because the, here's the great thing. It could be the bad thing or just anything. Not everything has to be good or bad, Evan. Jesus. But there's radical people everywhere. There's people that are ridiculous everywhere. And if you're talking about like a political sense, there's weird political people everywhere. But like, I don't really care. All, all I care about is are people nice? Are you a good person? Are you hurting other people? Do you want other people to prosper and have a good life? That's all I care about. You know, are you a good steward of the world? That's all it is to me. So I don't really... Uh, I don't really see much of a difference. Um, Texans are very polite, like true Texans. Um, they're kind of, I, I think they appreciate the hospitality and they, they, they like welcoming people. Like, you know, I've had multiple people welcome me to Texas and I always just love hearing it. It's just like exotic to me. Welcome to Texas. Uh, but I also was talking about this the other day when uh, people, what was I? I just totally brain farted completely. Um, fuck, what was it? It was going to be the cherry on top of this question. Californians and Texans. Ah, we lost it. We lost it completely. It's gone. I'm sorry. It dove deep. Um, yeah, I don't see much of a difference between but it's also here oh yeah, yeah yeah i got it back i got it back here we are hopefully it's worth it um there was never a thing i feel like california gets a bad rap i've never had someone from another state go to california like me being born in california and ever been worried about them fucking omaha california like don't nebraska my california don't colorado my california you know and here's the thing California's over fucking stuffed with people. But we just kept being like, yeah, come on in. Come on in. Like that's that's one thing that might be a little different here is it I think it's heightened because of political shit that people are worried where other people are coming from. You know, like it's such a unique way of life, I guess, in Texas. But I think everything goes and ebbs and flows in different phases and like, you know, what's cool right now is Texas. But you guys remember how many fucking songs were written about California? California dreaming? 
on such a winter day, stopped into a church, baby. I passed along the way. All right. Um, that song was such a hoodwink, though. What a sham. If I was in L.A., L.A., L.A. now, that is a that is a cesspool for all the weirdest shit. Um, but also my take on what Texas might be is different. I mean, I lived before in uh, like the Dallas area and that was real cool. I liked it a lot. It was everything was balanced, you know, in Arlington where it was like politically, I couldn't tell what was going on. I think it was a good balance. And uh, I really liked that a lot. I don't like extremes uh, politically when you're just towing the party line. And I just felt like everything was kind of neutral when I lived in Arlington. Now, when you go into Austin, it's pretty radical. It, it gets pretty weird and not weird in the Austin weird way, because the way the old Austin was, was pretty dope from the stories I've heard. Uh, it was like real open mindedness. Now there's like a weird segregation, pretending to be inclusion vibe to Austin in a lot of parts where, you know, they just, they're overcorrecting right now. I'm going to give these kids the benefit of the doubt and just say it's an overcorrection. Um, but I don't like that extremism, you know, and that's might be the thing that skews my opinion on what separates California from Texas. I didn't, you know, there was a lot more, there was balance in California, but I also live outside of Austin in a more balanced area. So I, the most political stuff I experience is once I go into Austin, because when I'm outside of Austin, I don't really experience it, but I don't know what people are. And I think that's the way it should be. Uh, so yeah, key difference between Californians and Texans. I can't really tell you much. Can't tell you much, but you know what I can't tell you? I love you. And thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode. I hope you got one little gem, something. Hope it entertained you, made you crack a smile, maybe. A little bit of laughter. And shit. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Just know, no matter what, no matter what happens from here on out, you started this Litty Titty Tuesday with a banger. And just know, I'll see you Thursday. And I love you.